Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Today we're going to be creating interactive activities using Google Slides. You can use this for distance learning or if you're using a blended learning approach. I'll be putting out videos each week, so if you haven't already, press the subscribe button to stay updated with these videos. Alright, let's get started. Today we'll be creating four interactive activities using Google Slides. You can adopt these activities for any subject area or grade level as well. The first thing we'll be doing is adding a background. The idea is it's not going to be shifting around whilst we're working. So we go to background, choose image. We can do a Google image search and we'll find a blank notepad and insert it in. Okay, so if we drag on the background, it's not shifting around. Let's copy and paste a few of these so that we have a couple of slides with the same background. Let's add a text box and we'll write activity. The first activity is going to be a drag and drop activity where students will be given a number line and numbers to put on top of the number line. So let's have drag and drop the numbers onto the number line. Okay, add lines appropriately. If you're using interactive slides for the first time, you do need to demonstrate this with the students so that they know what they're doing. So let's make it a little bit larger. We can also add a fill. So let's go for a blue fill and align it. Okay, so that's quite good. And let's go and find a number line. Insert image search from the web. If you already have one onto your computer, you can also just upload that. So let's go for a number line. I'll separate that. That should come up as well. All right, so there it is. We want to create a few numbers as well so that students can drag it on top of the number line. Let's add a text box and we'll just write any number. Okay, and we'll do some center aligning and change the fill. You can even add a border, change the, let's change to another color actually. And you can change the um, thickness of the border as well. You can even format it so that you have a shadow in the background, so format options drop shadow and you can increase the radius of that so that looks quite good as well you can change the font make it stand out or you can leave it it's up to you okay so that looks really good and students essentially will just go and drag that where it's supposed to be so it's supposed to be somewhere here okay negative 0 0.5 okay it's a really good idea to also have an example so let's have an example. So let's say we've got a number that's 2.5. I'll also add a text box which says example. Okay. Let's make it red so that it stands out. And you can add a line so that it's clearer where it goes, make it a bit thicker, okay, something like that is fine, we can even just do three, all right, and then you just need to add a couple more options, so let's say we want to do another positive number okay if you want to write in fractions then you do need to use a google slides add-on so let's go to add-ons and it's equation editor for maths and if you don't have that you can just go to get add-ons to put that in All right so let's go to text to image and you do need to write in latex for this it's not too hard um you just you've got some instructions here so if you want to do a fraction you need to do a backward slash write f r a c and then you just need to write the numerator and then the denominator in curly brackets. So let's say the numerator is two and the denominator is three. Let's copy that in. All right, so we've got two thirds there. I'll make it a bit bigger, oh, it's a bit big. 
Okay, that's fine. If you want to have a mixed number, then let's say you've got negative two and two thirds, something like that. Yep, there it is. You can just copy that image in as well. All right, let's get rid of that. And we can give it a background. So let's make that blank. Move the, okay, arrange it so that the number comes to the front. All right, and lastly is just group them. So select all and then right click to group so that when students come to this number, they will move the background with the text. Okay, so same thing. We just need to delete the text there and put in our fraction. Arrange this and then group it. Okay. All right, so you can also put a shape so that you have all of the options available in the same spot. So let's go for something like this. Arrange it so that it sits in the back. Okay, so all of the options are sitting in the same spot. All right, and you can add as many as you like. Let's say that you want to extend students. We can have another shape over here. And in this shape, we're going to say extension, create three of your own numbers and place them on the number line. Okay, so what we're going to need is a couple of blank rectangles here so that students can write their own options. Okay, and that's, oops, that's fine. All right. I would also just change the font and change the color of the background there as well. If you don't like that font, you can definitely change it. So there we have it. Let's go to our second activity. And the second activity is going to be a diagram where students have to label the diagram. So what we'll need is just the same text box for an activity. Oops, not that one. Let's copy this box. And we'll just change the text in here. So let's say um, drag and drop the correct labels onto the diagram. And you can find a diagram from the internet. I've saved one onto my computer, so I'm just going to use that one. Let's go to insert, image, upload from the computer. And I've got okay, a blank neuron here, a blank diagram here, where students need to select um, some options that we're going to create in a second and place them onto the diagram so that it becomes labeled. I'm actually going to go and copy these rectangles we made earlier. They're quite nice because they've already got the drop um, shadow. They can, they've got the correct font that I want to use. Gendrite, nucleus, These are bolded for us. They don't really want to be bolded so much. Or cell body. And we've got axon. Myelin sheath. And last one should just be accent terminal. And again, students will just be dragging and dropping these onto the diagram. You can put a shape over there as well. So let's go to shape just to make everything stand out. 
something like this. Okay, so it's quite obvious that these are the solutions and they just, students just need to drop it, drag and drop them in. Make that two lines if you like, just to fit that in. Cool. All right, so let's go to our third activity. So for our third activity, I'm just going to use a different background and let's delete those text boxes, go to background, choose image, and we're going to search for a blank note book. Okay, let's select this image to insert. This is exactly what I want. I want a section of the background that's um, white. Um, we're gonna ask students to create something here. So let's go and grab the instructions over here. We'll change the text. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple of things here. First thing we're going to have is a video. So this is going to be a lesson on quadrilaterals. So we're going to insert first a video of um, quadrilaterals. So what is a quadrilateral? Here it is, and we're just going to shrink it and put it over here. Okay, so this one, watch the video on the right. Okay, step two, I'm going to ask students to list all the quadrilaterals that they know. Let's shrink this text a bit so we can fit a few more lines. And then afterwards, I want students to use the shape tool on slides, so that's this tool, to create their own diagram using just quadrilaterals. So they can choose, for example, a parallelogram, they can use um, rectangles and things like that to create some sort of image. Okay, so you do need to demonstrate how to do that. So create a diagram of a house using only quadrilaterals. If they want to use another tool, um, they definitely can. They don't, they don't need to stick with Google Slides if they don't want to, but um, Google Slides has all the different types of quadrilaterals in here as well. So create a diagram of a house using only quadrilaterals. Use the shape tool on Google Slides and create your diagram on the middle of this slide. I'm trying to explain as, in as much detail as possible, but also kind of be concise as well. We even have another instruction here in red that says create your diagram, create your house diagram here. Just be extra specific. You just can go ahead and delete that later if they don't want to have that there. Why oh, it's taking too much room. Let's go to our fourth activity, which will be our last activity, and it will be a compare and contrast question where students um, choose two items and then find the similarities and differences. So you can adopt this for um, English where you're comparing and contrasting two book characters or two books, or you can do it with, um, let's say, science where you're comparing and contrasting two different um, processes Okay, so we'll just have compare and contrast and fill in the uh, Venn diagram. We're going to create a Venn diagram. So we're going to have some circles, okay, that intersect. So make the circles transparent. 
and we're gonna also have some text as well. So let's say it's like two characters. We'll have character one. Character two. Okay, and I would recommend that you have the text boxes ready for students so that they know exactly how many um, similarities and differences you expect. So let's have a light background. Okay. okay. For the second character, you can also change the color. So maybe not that one. We've already used that for the title. needs to have a few rectangles for the middle as well although for the middle you do need to change maybe the text size because um, there's not as much space in the middle okay. all right something like that Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you got some ideas on how to use Google Slides to make interactive activities. If you have your own ideas, make sure you let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to Class Notes for more videos like this in the future. Until next week, see you later and have a good day. Bye.